So, in yesterday's class, we looked at box functions, right, and we saw that we could use a whole set of box functions to represent any given function, right. Uh, I was originally planning to do hat functions today, but first we maybe we will look at polynomials and functions uh, as uh, a means of generating basis vectors say on a given interval right and see what is the problem with that and then we will go on to hat functions is that fine. So the question is the problem that we had with the box function, <coughs> the problem that we had with the box function was that even for a straight line if we wanted to approximate the straight line we got because our function is a constant on a given interval we got a representation which was which was piecewise constants right and we could get as close as we want to the function that we are trying to represent but then as a consequence the jumps that we get the number of jumps that we get in the function representation increases right so we are trying to ask the question isn't there a way for us to get something that is smoother we have defined the dot product yesterday as the dot product of f comma g as the integral if the functions are defined on the interval a b as f g dx we will see what this means if we just take an interval again say 0 1 or something of that sort and see what it means to the standard polynomials that we deal with okay and see whether we can use those to represent our functions. So consider the functions two functions f of x equals 1 and g of x equals x to start with okay are these functions orthogonal to each other or what is the angle between these functions does that make sense. So once you have defined the dot product once we have defined the dot product we can use the definition of the dot product that we had earlier from geometry where we said that a dot b is magnitude a magnitude b cosine of the angle included angle between them we can use a similar idea and basically say that cosine of the angle between two functions would be the dot product fg divided by the norm of f the norm of g right analogous to what we did with vectors you could define a theta in a similar fashion. So the question that I am asking so we have already used actually we have already used the property that theta is pi by 2 we said that two functions are orthogonal we have already done that yesterday the question that I am asking is it, is it is it possible for us to find the angle between the functions f and g as given there okay. So what is f dot g what is that dot product integral x let us say the functions are defined on the interval x belongs to the interval 0 comma 1 let us say we take x from on the interval 0 1 the function is defined on the interval 0 1. So it is 1 times 1 times x dx which gives me x squared by 2 between the limit 0 1 which is 1 half is that fine. So clearly they are not orthogonal clearly they are not orthogonal what is magnitude f magnitude f is the square root of the integral 0 to 1 dx which is 1 and what is magnitude g the norm of g The integral 0 to 1 x square dx square root which gives me x cube by 3 between 0 to 1 1 divided by square root of 3 is that fine okay and therefore of course all of these numbers look familiar because we just dealt with something very similar in the last class and therefore what do we get for cos theta one by 
2 root 3 and you can consequently find theta. So I, I, it, it's a, it's just an interesting exercise. You can consequently find theta. What does it mean? Anviksha, is there a mistake? Root three by did I goof? I made a mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, root three by two. I'm sorry. Root three by two. It gives a much better number, right? It gives you a much better angle. Okay, right. So, but I'm not really interested in finding theta here, right? Or I realize that theta is not pi by two, okay? And we have already seen earlier that it is very convenient to have these functions or the basis vectors that we get to be orthogonal to each other, right? We have already seen that it is convenient to have these vectors orthogonal to each other. So, given this, we'll follow the same process that we did earlier and try to get two sets of vectors, two vectors which are perpendicular to each other from the one comma x. So 1 comma x are linearly independent, 1 and x are linearly independent. How do I find, how do I get two vectors so that that angle is pi by 2? So what I do is, I repeat what we did earlier. So if this is A and this is B, right. So from A of course I can get the unit vector A little a which is a hat right and I can find the projection of b on a. How do I find the projection of b on a? I take b dot a okay. So b dot a, b dot a gives me the projection the component of b that is along a right. b dot a gives me a component of b that is along a. Let me just give it a subscript b sub a. B sub A times A hat, what is that? That is a vector representation of the component of B along A, right. So if I subtract this from B, B minus B sub A, A hat and I call that, uh, what shall I call that? I just call that uh, B prime. What is B prime? B prime is the vector B with its projection from A removed from it, okay. So now the question is what is B prime dot A? B prime dot A is 0. So we have managed to construct, we have managed to construct a B prime which is orthogonal to A and from B prime, from B prime I can get a, I will just call it a B hat by dividing by the magnitude of B prime, okay. So you gave me A, B to start with and I come back with an A prime, B prime, I am sorry A hat, B hat which are unit vectors which are orthogonal to each other, okay. So you have given me, you have given me one uh, a set of vectors, I have now managed to uh, extract from that A hat, B hat which are orthogonal to each other. So if I had a third function, if I had a third vector C. I could repeat this process. If I had a third vector C, what I would basically do is from the third vector, I will subtract out the B hat part, I will subtract out the A hat part and I will be left with something that is purely C, right. If I am left with nothing, that means C was linearly dependent on the other two. Is that fine? Okay. We will do that now to the functions. We will do that now to the vectors 1 and x. So back here, we ask the question, what was f dot g? f dot g was half is one half. So this is this times one. So the function that is along that is the, the component of f that is along g or g that is along f is one half if it is g along f right and f is a constant and therefore if I subtract out if I repeat the process b minus uh, b prime a, b minus uh, b dot a. If I repeat, repeat that uh, process, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get uh, x minus one half times one. The basis vector is just the constant function one. Okay, and this should be now my new improved. This should be now my new improved g prime. 
is that fine okay so can i make this a unit vector is it possible for me to make it a unit vector g prime how do i make g prime the unit vector so what is g prime dotted with g prime x minus 1 half squared dx on the interval on which it is defined which is x minus half cubed between 0 and 1 and what is this 1 half cubed plus 1 half cubed oops I am sorry which equals 1 fourth is that right into oh I am sorry x by 3 by 3 fine okay and therefore g hat g if you want to call it g prime hat if you want to call put a hat on it just like we did for the other unit vector or you just call it g hat g hat would be x minus 1 half I have to divide by the magnitude so the magnitude is 2 times square root 3 are there any questions that is fine so now we have the vectors 1 2 times square root 3 into x minus 1 half is that fine these are orthonormal the magnitudes are 1 and they are orthogonal to each other okay let me add a third vector into the mix what if I added x squared I want to add x squared so I, I define an h of x which is x squared if I define an h of x which is x squared and this is still on the interval 0 1 if I define an h of x which is x squared what is g hat dotted with h that is 2 root 3 x minus 1 half into x squared the integral from 0 to 1 dx is that fine Everyone, yeah. So, what does this integral give me? This gives me a 2 root 3 into that gives me a x to the fourth divided by 4 minus x cubed divided by 6 between the limits 0 and 1, which is 2 root 3 times 1 fourth minus 1 sixth. what does that give me hmm? 1 by 2 root 3 so that is the component of h along g hat so we repeat this process so from h that is x squared I subtract out this component so that is 1 over 2 root 3 times what is the basis vector 2 root 3 into x minus half I am repeating the same process that I did here b minus b a times a I am repeating the same process that I did there which of course gives me x squared minus x
plus half and there is something wrong. We have to okay that is fine. So what is the other thing that we have that is x squared minus x plus half yeah that is fine. So what do we have now? So we have uh, we have removed the g hat component this is has removed the g hat component. So what I will call this is uh, h hat h, uh, h prime. Now I want from this I want to get rid of the component that belongs to 1 the function 1. So what is uh, h prime dot f that is the integral 0 to 1 x squared minus x plus 1 half times dx which gives me x cube by 3 minus x squared by 2 plus x by 2 between the limits 0 and 1 and that should give me the projection of h prime on f which is nothing but one by three minus one by two plus one by two which is one third is that fine and as a consequence if I subtract this out from here I am going to get h double prime which is x squared minus x plus one sixth minus x plus one sixth okay. If I subtract a third from the half I get one sixth and I let you verify you can verify that h hat h hat in fact is 6 times the fifth root root of 5 x squared minus x plus 1 sixth you can just check that out find out what the magnitude is please. Yeah. If I am taking the no, if I am taking you are saying do G instead of instead of instead of G hat you are saying do G instead of H prime F do H F. G prime and whether I take H prime there or H it does not matter you are saying why do not I just do X cubed instead X squared yeah. times 1 whatever it is that is fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the order does not matter the order does not matter what you have to basically do is you have to make sure that if you have a set of vectors that you are subtracting out uh, this and this from x yeah that is true you could what you are basically saying then the expression is a lot easier I did not I did not have to include that x plus half because anyway it is orthogonal that is true. Yeah, because the part that I am subtracting out, you understand the point that he is making. The part that I have subtracted out here is basically comes from is already orthogonal to f, so there is no reason to include that in the calculation. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah, are there any questions? So you can see, you can see that, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that now I have, I will call them f hat, g hat, h hat. You can see that I can actually generate a whole function, a whole set of these functions. Okay, in fact, I can just take, I can take the set one x, x squared, x cube, x to the fourth, and so on. And I can gen, I can generate a whole set of these basis vectors that are orthonormal. 
orthogonal to each other and the magnitude is 1 right based on our definition of the dot product is that fine okay now uh, why do not we just use this why do not we just use this to represent our functions right why not just use this to represent our functions so that is one question that we have why bother with box functions these are nice and smooth functions why not just use these to represent our functions is that fine okay of course if our function uh, had a cubic variation and we took only the first term first three terms right we are unlikely to pick up that cubic variation properly am I making sense you can see what you can go check to see what kind of an error that you would make and so on. The other problem is just like in uh, Fourier series maybe we will look at Fourier series a little right now just I am not sure how many of you are familiar with Fourier series uh, there is the issue of how do we when we are when we are hunting remember do not forget why we are doing this why we are why we are constructing these orthonormal functions right just to recollect our governing equations are differential equations the solutions are functions we want to write programs that will systematically hunt for the solution which means systematically hunt for the functions so we are trying to create a set of functions which have some structure in them so that we can search them in a systematic fashion okay so such a set of functions right such a set of functions which have this nice structure what is the distance between functions and so on such a set of function we will call it a space a function space a space of functions right and we are basically trying to construct a function space that is essentially it okay so let us let let us let, see let us see what happens let me uh, we will get back maybe what we will do is we will do Fourier series also we will go along and then see what is the issue with what is the issue why cannot we why do not we use this right and we do use it sometimes let us let us let us see what we get. Now one of the points that I want you to check out you can try this out now if I take the same functions 1 x x squared and so on if I take the same set of functions but now they are defined on the interval minus 1 to 1 does anything change does anything change so what happens to f dot g becomes minus 1 to 1 1 times x dx which is x squared by 2 from minus 1 to plus 1 and it is 0 they are orthogonal so the orthogonality depends on the interval in which the function is defined the dot product is defined over that whole interval it may be obvious right when you look at it but the number of times students make a generic statement saying sin and cosine are orthogonal to each other and then integrate on the wrong interval right it happens it happens to all of us right so you have to be a bit careful it is orthogonal from minus 1 to plus 1 but not orthogonal on the interval 0 to 1 okay I would suggest that you try to do a few of these on the interval minus 1 to plus 1 just like I, I have gone through right so for on the interval 0 1 I would suggest that you try x cubed or something of that sort just to make sure that you are able to get through on that and then do these from minus 1 to plus 1 do a few of them okay and if you have had ordinary differential equations if you had a course in ordinary differential equations before pay attention to the functions that you are getting and ask yourself have you seen them before right you should get a familiar set of functions right especially if you have done a course in ordinary differential equations this interval minus 1 to plus 1 should give you should yield a familiar set of functions right let us look at uh, I am not going to do Fourier series in great detail here so Fourier series the functions that you are looking at are of the form 1 sin cosine sin 2 cosine 2 and so on they are functions of this nature okay so the obvious question from this discussion the obvious question is is are the functions 1 and sin orthogonal to each other right so now you should always remember you have to ask the question on what interval are we talking right what is the dot product definition of the dot product and what is the interval on which we are talking 
So if you say that on the interval 0 to 1 sin of x dx not 0 right on the other hand if you take say on the interval 0 to 2 pi sin of x dx you do get 0 fine. So the functions 1 and sin are indeed orthogonal are indeed orthogonal on the on that interval and of course you can figure out how to go about normalizing it and so on. So the point of this discussion is that the interval the domain on which we are we are defining the function is important right for our for our idea of orthogonality just as it is important for our idea of the dot product and of course when we are actually solving problems when we get to the point where we are actually solving working on fluid mechanics uh, problems and asking questions and answering questions in fluid mechanics you will have you will know what is the extent of your domain and therefore you will know what are A and B fine. So why do not we just use this why do not we just use 1 x x squared and so on why not just use Fourier series right to fit. So if I give you a function if I give you a graph if I give you some arbitrary graph why not just use these polynomials in order to approximate this function to represent this function why do I why do I go through this headache of trying to find piecewise constants that will approximate the function okay. The idea here is that if I have if I have my f hat g hat h hat that I got uh, earlier that I got here if I have the f hat g hat a hat I can try to find a f hat plus b g hat plus c h hat I can try to find the coefficients a b and c in order to approximate this function and in adjusting in adjusting these values while I am hunting for the function any change I make to a will translate the whole graph up down any change I make to b will cause the slope to change any change I make to c right will cause the curvature to change everywhere the key word is everywhere right. So if I am if I am now if I have this complicated function and I am trying to fit a curve to it every time I adjust one coefficient every time I adjust one coefficient to fit some part the trouble is it is going to get spoiled somewhere else it is very likely that it will change somewhere else I do not have what is called the pro property of locality I do not have this power where local changes local changes in coefficients cause only local changes in the function I want to be able to I want to be able to raise and lower this whereas if you take this box function it is possible for me to take this and lower it there independent of what is happening elsewhere I can just change the level of just at one interval right so the box function cle clearly has this property of locality I can just change in one interval I can change the level I can change the level of that function just in one interval without affecting anything else that is happening elsewhere okay. So this property of locality is very important this property of locality gives me this freedom gives me this freedom for me to adjust my solution as I go along okay without in particular without affecting other parts of my solution that I have already possibly adjusted to my satisfaction right whereas if I do not have locality if I do not have locality then a change any change that I make is a global change right. So if I say a sin x if I change a sin x is going to change in fact if you think about it sin x actually is defined from minus infinity to plus infinity so you are changing everything from minus infinity to plus infinity just by changing this a right total global change whereas what I would like to do is I would like to keep it local fine okay. So for that reason right now I am going to reject using f hat g hat h hat right having gone through this effort I basically say it is nice I know how to do it but I am going to reject these functions okay we can come back later and see whether it is possible for us to use them or not. What we would really like is we would like the smoothness that these polynomials bring and the locality that the box, box function got we would like to have the smoothness that these polynomials bring with tied to the locality that the 
box functions product okay and therefore as a consequence now merging these two we are going to come up with hat functions okay we are going to define this as follows what we realize is if you have so from the yesterday's class we know the support of two functions is non overlapping is not overlapping then they will be orthogonal they are orthogonal to each other there is a reason why I, I repeat this there is a reason why I write this out and repeat this. So it has only to do with the support right remember the support basically means the function is non-zero in that in that uh, part of the domain right. So it has only to do with the support it does not actually have to do with the function value that means that if I have in yesterday I chose functions f and g in a fashion such that the support was non overlapping this was f that was g and yesterday we basically said that f dot g because the support is non overlapping it turned out that f dot g are orthogonal to each other. The question is does it have to be a constant there it could be anything as long as it is not 0 right. Is that fine? So since this is true since it comes from the support what we will do is we will try to pick one of those polynomials to do it and to keep life easy we are going to pick the linear we are going to pick x right we are we are going to be a bit careful here so we, we pick x. So let me see if I can construct these functions in a systematic fashion. So we have some interval a b that we are interested in right and as we did earlier we are going to break up this interval into sub intervals. I am going to look at focus on one particular sub interval x i x i plus 1 okay. So I will zoom in on that I will zoom in on that particular interval so what I am going to do is I am going to just zoom in on this particular interval that is xi xi plus 1 and I will define two functions here I will define two functions here. one is a function it is basically 0 everywhere and at, at x i it is 0 and it then rises from x i to x i plus 1 it goes from 0 to the value 1. I will name this function n it is 1 at i plus 1 i plus 1 0 because I am going to define two such functions. The other function is also 0 everywhere right just like the box function the only difference is that it drops from 1 to 0 going from x i to x i plus 1 and since this function is 1 at x i I will call it n i and it is a second function so n i 1 is that fine do you understand what the functions do the blue one n i plus 1 0 is 0 everywhere so it is going to be 0 from a to b everywhere except on the interval x i x i plus 1 where it starts at 0 and in a linear fashion rises to 1. n i is again 0 everywhere over the whole interval a b except at x i x i plus 1 it starts at 1 and goes down to 0 fine 
Now clearly if I have two such functions, clearly if I have two such functions on two different intervals, if I have two such functions on two different intervals, if I have one interval here and I have another interval here and if I have two such functions on these two different intervals, so I have one function here and the same blue, one function here, one function there and one function here, one function. If I have two such functions, right, this is n i plus 1, 0, n i 1, this would be n j plus 1, 0, n j 1. If I have two such functions, these two functions are orthogonal to those two functions. Each of these functions is orthogonal to each of those functions. If I define such functions over, over all the intervals xi, xi plus 1, in any given interval one of these functions will be orthogonal to functions in the other interval because the intervals are non-overlapping, fine. So we use the fact that the supports are non-overlapping therefore they are orthogonal. That is the good part. But what about the two functions to each other? The two functions obviously to each other are not orthogonal, right? They are obviously not orthogonal. So, what is that dot product? What is ni0, ni1, I am sorry, ni plus 1 dotted with is a function of x, ni0 as a function of x dx, the integral it is 0 everywhere except from xi to xi plus 1. What is this function? What is this integral? So in order to do this we have to get a function form. We have to get an algebraic form for ni and nix, okay. We have to get an algebraic form for ni and nix, ni plus 1 and ni plus 1, ni plus 1x and nix, okay. So we come back here. What is ni plus 1? as a function of x x minus xi divided by xi plus 1 minus xi right as a positive slope as a positive slope over the length x, xi xi plus 1 minus xi it goes from 0 to 1 right. So at x equals xi it is 0 at x equals xi plus 1 it is 1 it is a linear function. So it is satisfies it satisfies right again we are hunting even here if you think about it we are actually hunting for functions right I have given you a graph and we hunted and found that function okay. And what is ni? So if this is some alpha of x if this is some alpha of x, I name it alpha of x simply because so what is ni? Is 1 minus alpha of x. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? So what we do is, what we will do now is we will find out what is that, what is the, what is the dot product, uh, what is that dot product. So ni1 dotted with ni plus 1 0 gives me integral xi plus 1 to xi up xi to xi plus 1. alpha of x times 1 minus alpha of x dx and what does this turn out to be?
you can just check that you can just verify that that is true. So is that fine okay so what we have now what we have now is I have defined a bunch of functions n i 0 and n i plus 1s these depend of course on the interval so obviously if I go to i minus 1 if I go to i minus 1 this is on the interval i i plus 1 if I go to the interval i minus 1 to i what will I get the corresponding functions n i minus 1 0 n i 1 am I making sense if I go to the intervals i minus 2 i minus 1 I will have the functions n i minus 2 0 n i minus 1 1 fine on each of the intervals I will have two of these functions. What have we managed to do so far? What can we do with this? What can we do with these two functions that we have defined on the interval? So, first let us just focus on this interval alone. We will just look at this interval alone. So, if I take ai, ai or a times ni1 plus b times ni plus 1, 0 as some function f of x defined only on x i x i plus 1 what does this give me for any given a b what does the graph of this look like it has to be a straight line is the sum of two linear elements and if I were to graph it if I were to just graph f of x remember this is the interval x i x i plus 1 if I were to just graph it at x equals x i n i is 1 at x equals x i plus 1 n i plus 1 is 1 the other one is 0. So this is going to be a function that goes from a to b in a linear fashion. So if I change my b value if I change the value of b if I were to raise the value of b from here to some value here then I would get a graph that looks like that right. So I have a linear interpolant but I also have locality in the sense that if I raise this value a b it affects this interval and we will see if it affects anything else is that fine okay. So a i a n i b n i plus 1 allows me to give you a get a linear interpolant in the interval x i x i plus 1. So in general if I had an arbitrary function f of x I should be able to write this f of x as summation i equals 1 through n I will just write it as 1 through n we have to figure out what happens at the uh, intervals elsewhere to, to, towards the uh, beginning and end but anyway we will go through we have n, n intervals i equals 1 through n what am I going to get ai ni 0 plus bi ni plus 1 1. is that fine the intervals are non overlapping they are orthogonal it should be possible for me to represent any function f of x in this fashion on any given interval the a i b i will give me the straight line interpolant between those two points okay let us take two intervals and see what happens let us take two intervals and see what happens. So this is x i minus 1 x i 
xi plus 1. Okay. So I have some function. I have some function and I want to represent this function using my newly developed newly developed right linear interpolants. So what I am going to do is I am going to use let me use some colored chalk here on the interval xi xi plus 1 if I take these two values to be a and b I will get a linear interpolant that looks like that on the interval xi minus 1 xi what will my a value be what is a a is the value here and what is b b is going to be what was the a in the xi xi plus 1 interval so in fact though it looks like though it looks like though it looks like i have two coefficients incidentally it's possible we could come up with a scheme just like in the in the box function if you are willing to allow discontinuities at this interval at the end of edge of this interval at the interface between the two if you are allow, willing to allow discontinuities then a's and b's can be separate, different but if you want the function to be a continuous function the representation to be a continuous which is where we are going right now then the ai corresponding to xi right has to be the bi corresponding to the xi okay has to, so the a and b at this point have to be the same is that okay everyone okay so in fact what you have to do is we have to recombine these so you are saying ai ni bi and i plus 1 so maybe what i should have done here was i should have made this bi plus 1 i plus 1 ni plus 1 okay if i make that bi plus 1 then what does that do for me then i can actually make the statement that ai should be equal to bi allows me to do that so the coefficient here is the same and what are the functions what are the basis vector what are the basis vectors ni ni is that it multiplies this coefficient ai what does it multiply it multiplies if this is 1 or let me let me lower the let us just say this is 1 it multiplies this function what is this function what was this label ni 1 and it multiplies this function and what was its label do I have did I did I switch it around ni0 ni1 did I have it right the first time around okay fine ni0 yeah ni1 I had it right the first time around okay there in the integral okay I made a mistake here okay that is fine sorry yeah you guys should tell me immediately as soon as you catch it so I have, I have flipped it around everywhere thank you yeah you should not let me go through with this well fortunately what is going to happen is I am going to get rid of those superscripts so okay fine look at the functions ni0 and ni1 ni0 and ni1 are non overlapping I can actually combine these two functions I can add them up I can literally add them up since ai and bi ai and bi are the same ai equals bi equals same this summation summation i equals 1 through n right since ai and bi are the same I have to just shift this so if I go back to when this was i minus 1 i equals 1 or if you want me to I can write it out but anyway it is okay if I factor out the ai's since the ai and bi are the same I am going to get what I have seen here is I am going to get an ni0 plus an ni1 that summation f of x 
you can open out the summation for a few terms and see see that this is true okay it is actually possible for me to factor out the ai since ai equals bi it is actually possible for me to factor out the ai for ni0 and ni1 and these this these can be added now these can actually add and if you add them this is the function that you get okay so this is summation i equals 1 through n ai ni i will rewrite this summation i will rewrite it at the other end so f of x can in fact be written as summation i equals 1 through n ai ni where ni of x equals ni 0 of x plus ni 1 of x is that fine 0 2 n minus 1 as I said so we will have to look at what happens through because uh, there is an issue so I leave this these we, we will investigate I just write this just for uh, right so we, we have to really look at what happens what happens for all these intervals okay so now for uh, so the end points we look at what happens at the end points we look at what happens at the end point you have to be a bit careful at the ends okay right so what is this function ni what is the graph of the function ni so if I have xi I have xi minus 1 I have xi plus 1 this is ni as a function of x it is 0 it is 0 from a to xi xi minus 1 it rises it rises to 1 linearly drops to 0 at xi plus 1 linearly and is again 0 okay because of the shape of the function these functions are called either hat functions or tent functions you can imagine that if you construct functions like this in two dimensions that they look like a tent they are called tent functions or hat functions is that fine okay are there any questions okay so then we will continue with this in the next class